rudely that I'll start at seven, but if people don't join, I don't feel like starting also. All right, so <clears throat> let's get started. Um, let me promise you something. Uh, if you practice whatever I am telling you to do, uh, by the next weekend, you would be able to magically create virtual machines on your system in minutes with all their setup in minutes. Okay, I'll train you like that. So and that will be automation. Okay, when you when I say magically means you know automatically. Okay, you'll just run few commands and you know you'll be have four, five, six machines running VMs running on your laptop. Okay, without worrying too much. But before we go there, uh, we need to learn how to set up virtual machine on our laptop on our computer. Okay, manually. Uh, now most of you would be having Windows based laptop. I'm sure some wouldn't would be having Mac OS. If you have, please put it in the chat. I'll send you the steps for those things also. And if you're using Linux as the desktop operating system, that also please put it in the chat. So I will know and I'll send you the right steps. So in this course, we will be using we'll be learning a lot of tools. Uh, we'll be learning Jenkins, Ansible, Kubernetes, this, that. Uh, and to learn all these tools and technology, we need operating system to set them up. And we cannot do everything on our laptop. So first, we will start with setting up on virtual machine. We'll set up virtual machine. So you have seen yesterday uh, our architecture, vProfile architecture. There are so many uh, machines over there, more, two Nginx, two Tomcat, MySQL, right? MongoDB, all of that. To set up all that services, we will put it in different different operating system. For that, we need different different computers. Now we cannot purchase that many physical computer. We will set up all on virtual machine first. Then we will go it, go on the cloud. So VM setup uh, is not only uh, in this week. By the next weekend, what we'll be doing? It's not just about VM people. It's about your ground zero. You are good with your ground zero, then you can build strong building. I'm not I don't just cover tools. I mostly cover concepts. So here setting up virtual machine, you know, you can just Google find out how to set up virtual machine. You can do that. You look and learn vagrant. OK, but my main intention is always the concept based on these concept. We learn other things also. OK, now virtualization we have in the class, but later today we are just doing a prerequisite. OK, now when I start Vagrant, people have problems saying that, you know, uh, I don't know how to set up virtual machine manually and, you know, uh, automatically I'm showing them. So, yes, it's a problem for people who have never done it. So. Yeah, we do that, Ravi. So but uh, before, uh, you know, uh, I show that how to do it automatically, you should know how to do it manually first. So. <clears throat> today. It's a normal prerequisite. We'll just see how to set up two virtual machines on Oracle VM virtual box. All right. So on your laptop, we will install Oracle VM virtual box. It's a software also called as hypervisor where we create virtual machines. And then we'll create one CentOS virtual machine, a virtual machine with CentOS operating system and one virtual machine with Ubuntu operating system. Uh, once we have that up and running, then we will log into them by using putty and git bash. OK, <clears throat> so why Oracle VM virtual box? Why not some other software like VMware server and all? What Linux was? Balu Linux OS. Why don't we use AWS? We're going to do everything on AWS, man. But first, we'll start from the beginning. <clears throat> so uh, we are going to install Oracle VM VirtualBox, set it up, and then we'll download to ISO, and then we'll install operating system on that. So today, you will see the pain. By the time we are doing, you can ask me question also. OK, so let's get started with that. What happened? Come on. What oh, man? 
that's the best joke i heard why are we using centos ubuntu why not linux well, centos and ubuntu are linux operating system man okay so first we will download oracle vm virtual box okay so you have to select windows host anybody having mac os if you have mac os please put it in the chat repeating again because if you have mac os don't go with this step i will send you other steps for the installation download the software oh you have the latest version virtualbox 6.0.0.1 so I'm going to cancel that. I already have that downloaded and installed. So anybody have question like why are we using VirtualBox and not VMware Workstation or Server or Player or Fusion or Hyper-V? Like someone asked me, why are we not doing it on AWS? None? OK. Fine, I'll tell you myself. When we do Vagrant, it works very well with VirtualBox, Oracle VirtualBox. That's why we are sticking up with Oracle VirtualBox software. Okay, this software will help us create virtual machine. Okay. So why are you? Using yeah, you asked that question very late. I already answered. So yes, we are using it because uh, it's uh, very much compatible with other tools. We need to integrate tools, right? So this is very much compatible with other tools. It's very lightweight. That's why we are using Oracle. Don't think I'm unable to hear you. Are you able to hear me? Everyone? Okay, well, this is clear. Does VirtualBox old version make any difference? Uh, there may be some issue when we do it with uh, Vagrant. If you have an issue, you can uninstall the old, older one and install the new one. Yes, a lot of background noise, and I'm hearing that. Yeah. So if you have a question, unmute yourself, ask question, and then mute. Okay. So VirtualBox is already downloaded and I already have it installed installation is simple even though I'm sending you the documents it's very simple just open the software next 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 done finish you know how installation works in Windows same way so this is the latest version 6.0.0 I have fifth version so that may make some difference so once it is installed it will open up like this and you can check its version on help about VirtualBox 5.2.22. Okay. So I will upgrade also and try. Right. Anyways, you want to download an older version, um, you can just search it on the net. It will give you an archive directory. From there, you can download. Okay. Now we have Oracle VM VirtualBox. This software, as I told you, will help us create virtual machine and uh, in detail, we have virtualization later. Okay, today we are just doing prerequisite, so you can relax. You know, just follow the steps. That's enough for today. Virtual? Why are you only Oracle Virtual Machine only? I already answered that question, Nasiri. So, uh, as I told you, we are going to create two virtual machine. Oh, you don't need to follow me right away. You can uh, do it after the class. OK, it's better people. You do it after the class. If you try to follow me uh, in the class, you will miss so many things. OK, when I'm talking, when I'm explaining. So it's better you do it after the class. All right. Just watch first, learn, then do it. Can you step? Let me know steps for Linux 7.5. You will know steps for everything. OK. Don't worry. 
So we will first create a CentOS based virtual machine. Cancel run. It's taking such a long time. To create a virtual machine, you need to click here on new and it will open up a window. Then you have to type the name of your virtual machine. Imagine what we are doing here. Think it like we are assembling a computer like that. When we assemble the computer, have you ever assembled a computer? You know, I did a few times, you know, so you take RAM, CPU, you know, hard disk, all of that mother box, mother board, <laughs> mother box, mother board, right? And you assemble everything together. So creating a virtual machine here is similar work. Okay, so let's give it a name. I'll give it name as uh, DevOps CentOS. That's all. Type Linux. As soon as I typed here CentOS, it automatically selected here Linux. Okay, so you select Linux. CentOS is a Linux operating system, and it's 64-bit operating system we are going to install. So CentOS is from Red Hat. I'll explain you in detail about Linux. Okay, don't worry about Linux today. All right, nothing. You just select what I'm selecting. You'll start Linux from tomorrow onwards. Okay, uh, I guess from Monday onwards, not tomorrow. Tomorrow, I have a special class of Ansible for two hours for the old batch. So, Monday onwards, we're going to start Linux. All right, so that time you'll understand all the Linux concept why Linux, what is Linux, different commands, server administration, all of that. As of now, today, just VM setup. Next screen will ask you RAM size. Uh, we generally say it as memory. So you can use the scroller or you can just type how much RAM size you want. Uh, so keep one thing in mind. If you have never virtualized anything, there's nothing magical here. If I say one GB, it's gonna uh, take one GB from my computer, my computer physical RAM. Okay, so you can't just magically give here uh, you know, 8 GP or like that, and you and you don't have that much RAM in your system. That's not going to happen. So make sure you have some free RAM on your system. So for this course, we will set up multiple VMs sometimes, and you will need minimum 4 GB of RAM on your laptop. Minimum. More than that is better. Okay. In this course. Next, next screen ask us about the hard disk. It's saying our recommended size is 8 GB and I will have selected an option create a virtual hard disk now like a computer needs a hard disk this VM also needs hard disk okay create there are different types of hard disk files you know real hard disk also have types IDE PATA SATA SCSI this that here also you have type VDI is the default type of Oracle virtual box VM VMDK is a default type for VMware VMs. Okay, VMware is, you know, everyone knows VMware anyways. Uh, so we'll keep default VDI, go next. Now here we have two option. In storage, we get one option for virtual machine uh, storage, in, uh, hard disk size. Let's say we have selected 10 GB and we have given fixed here. So it will reserve 10 GB of size from the actual hard disk, from the physical hard disk. But if I say dynamically, then let's say I have given 100 GB and 100 GB is not available on your laptop hard disk. Still, you would be able to set up this VM. Dynamically means initially how much ever is required size that much will be you know, procured. Okay, rest all will, will not be procured. So it doesn't reserve the size okay as the data grows as it try to procure the size on the virtual hard disk from the physical hard disk so dynamically it will procuring 1 gb 2 gb like that you know so this is the best option which can manage storage very well because we are never sure how much storage we need and we always go for over provisioning probably i'll just need 20 gp and I'll, I'll select 50 gb i don't want to waste 30 gb so i'll select dynamically allocated next now let's select the size so i'll keep it default 8 gb you can give more than that but really we're just going to install the operating system not do anything else so i'm fine with that okay there a vm created now 
as you have a computer uh, you know bare metal you need to install operating system on that and you take a cd and put it in your computer or you put a pen drive from which it boots and starts the installation similar way here also we have to attach a cd but you know you can't really attach a cd here physical cd we will attach a virtual cd which is called as iso file okay so CentOS ISO file will need CentOS operating system so ISO file so we will download that download CentOS ISO okay so <clears throat> go with minimal ISO all right DVD ISO is everything in one it's going to be huge in size and these are the URLs, the mirrors from where you can download. You can select the one which is nearest to you or just select the first one. Okay, click on that and the download will start. And I'm gonna cancel that. So I already have it downloaded. So I'm not waiting for that download to complete. Okay, now let's attach the ISO file. Okay, so let's click on settings go to storage okay so that is your virtual hard disk and that is your virtual cd rom so let's select that option choose virtual optical disk file that means choose an iso file so in the downloads it's showing me centos 7 that's the iso and put a check mark here live cd dvd Okay, now nowadays most of the operating systems comes with live image. Live image means you can really uh, boot, uh, you know, the operating system with the CD, and you can see access the operating system, you know, feel it, and then if you're good, you like it, then you can install it. And to see an operating system, or you know, to access the operating system, you really don't need to install it today. Nowadays, okay. So most of the ISO today are live, live CD. So I put a check mark there. Okay, check the details, properties. Let me just expand it a little bit. Okay, so base memory is 1 GB, 1024 MB. Uh, we will also need to do one more thing that I'll explain your concept much in detail later. In network, Let's go to settings, network. You know, network interface card. Everyone knows network interface card, LAN card, or MAC card, or Ethernet port. See something, yes, no, maybe. Hey, am I audible? Yeah, yeah. yeah everyone knows nick card right so how many nick card or lan card or ethernet port are there on your laptop one that's right adi has one one says one yes neer says one i guess everyone says one so everyone has like one ethernet port okay how many network adapter you have <laughs> so your ethernet port is one network adapter. Do you have any other network adapter or any other network interface card? Yes, you must be having wireless adapter. Okay, how do you connect to Wi-Fi? Now forget about VM, forget about virtual, I'm talking about real on your laptop. So you have two network interface card right one is physical ethernet adapter and one is for wi-fi that's going to be on your motherboard inside you won't see it but it's there a physical thing okay like on your motherboard so a computer can have multiple network interface card or multi multiple adapter we can say servers will always have multiples because if one fails the other one still receives the connection for high availability i will talk about that in networking uh, here also vm we can give four adapters but here there is no wi-fi all right this vm doesn't have capability of wi-fi 
these network adapters acts like an ethernet adapter only right so <clears throat> one adapter will be there by default and it will be attached to nat now these are different types of network that virtual box provides you oracle virtual box its own network okay by default nat will be there all right select one more go to adapter to enable it and select bridged adapter here okay i'll explain you this concept later in detail and here select your network interface card that is connected to internet and you'll see how do will i find that well open your network settings network status yeah internet change adapter options yes check here okay so see i have an ethernet adapter adapter that is disconnected and i have a wi-fi it's connected but it is showing you disconnected that's because its name is disconnected <laughs> okay so its name check intel r centrino advanced n6205 blah 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 oh my god anyways we got the name that's the name of my adapter that is connected to internet so select that one here now in short what this will do this will get ip address from your wi-fi router okay now this is going to use your network adapter as a bridge your laptop's network adapter as a bridge to connect to your wi-fi router all right if you did not understand forget about it just select it i'll explain you this concept in detail i guess we are good to go and now we can power on start hey if you're low memory you don't want to select 1 gb you can go with 512 mb also okay 512 mb also works okay the vm is powering on then this is the monitor vm okay one thing if you click here it will capture your cursor okay click on capture you have to say install center 7 okay test this media and install center 7 then you have troubleshoot option i'll select install center 7 hit enter now you know you try to i'm trying to move my cursor okay but it's not coming out it's inside that monitor it's stuck there so i have to use right control okay right control my cursor is out okay you can check here it's written right control if i click here i'm clicking now okay one two three go okay capture stuck i'm not able to release my cursor okay so you have to hit right control the control button you have two control buttons the right side control button on your keyboard that you have to hit now don't ask me your right or my right we have all same right when we sit on the keyboard okay right control okay capture so it's booting up it's booting from the cd from the iso file Hey, by the time this happens, we will uh, download Ubuntu ISO also. We need to download Ubuntu and set up Ubuntu also. So let's see, download Ubuntu ISO. Download Ubuntu. Now, Ubuntu is more focused on the desktop, but there is a server version also, which is amazing now. So we have to say Ubuntu server ISO, okay? go to the official websites like i have been here to the official website centers.org this is ubuntu.com okay so there is ubuntu server 18 hmm. go with 18 you know 18 installation is a little different let's do it what's the big deal I don't think I have Ubuntu 18 server. You know, recently I installed Ubuntu 18 desktop and the installation was really different. Yes. No, that's server only. It's okay, I have it, I guess.
yeah i have it it's a server image so it will be written here server okay desktop is going to be all graphical based oh it's taking long time to come up okay by the time this comes up um how many people know what is a linux operating system nobody oh you'd be like oh if i say i know then you know you'll tell, ask me question somewhat hey if you don't know don't worry okay that's what we are that's why we are starting it from very basics okay you need to worry don't get panicky don't be afraid of asking questions whatever stupid or stupid question you feel ask all right nobody is going to judge you i don't judge people okay you know i i'm a little like you know funny and all you know but don't worry i don't judge you i don't make fun of you uh, you're here to learn all right and nobody will make fun of you even if someone makes fun of you who cares man really you know we are here to learn we learn and you know we we're going then right so who really cares anyways whatever question you have even the stupidest of the stupidest question you feel uh do not worry to ask ask me because if you don't ask me now later it will be a big problem for you that question okay that will haunt you throughout this course and that won't learn you so many concept that won't let you learn yes okay everything is going to be building block whatever i'm doing today is of a great importance what i'm going to do for to, to, for tomorrow it's a, okay it's a prerequisite whatever we are doing in the, in the first two weeks actually it's all prerequisite for you people all right you ask me right what is the prerequisite of joining the course what should i know what should in this two weeks we are doing that only all right so get along so yeah open source kernel based right you getting close i know i can google but what's the difference between ubuntu centos and other variants of linux yeah fine good question you'll understand that on monday it's command based os no that's wrong it's graphical based also cat etc release uh, that's one command on red hat systems it's open source yes kernel based every operating system is kernel based man windows is also kernel based kernel is the heart of any operating system what is that albanian <laughs> why did it select that language what is that language anyways oh we have telugu also see here you can select telugu also you know linux gives you wide variety of language you can't even think seriously you know it was showing marathi also see it shows so many local languages also okay english all right some common ground continue to just selecting the language can you let us know the supported os for devops ah wrong question just do it few days you'll understand there is no supported or like that os okay but devops is not a software that you know you can install on a supported operating system okay we are going to use all the operating system that comes out, come in our way okay Center six, seven, five, Red Hat, Enterprise Linux, Ubuntu, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, Windows Server, all of it. It seems very slow to me. I don't know for some reason. Selected one GB of RAM. Is it that enough? It's not supposed to be that slow. Uh huh. Hey, just give me a moment i'll be back oh okay um i clicked it long time and then this is selected now so time zone you can select 
Oh, nowadays OS installations are very simple. Okay, Linux OS is not as complicated as you think. Yeah, you said command based, right? You see anything command based? I'm doing all graphically. So CentOS installation, everything you select in this page, you have to let it give some time so it detects everything. First, you select date and time. I selected my date and time zone. Uh, then we will select network and host name. Here we will uh, enable our network interface. Okay, so click on that network and host name. So two adapter, one is connected to NAT, one is connected to Bridge. Okay, so I'm going to enable both of them on and on. Okay, so the first one is going to get an IP address from the Oracle virtual box. Okay, from Oracle virtual box 10.0.2.15, you'll also get similar IP. Okay, but the second interface, which is which is bridged interface, gets an IP address from my Wi Fi router. Okay, why do we need to do that? That I'll explain you later, but do it for now. Okay, also it has to come up when the operating system boots every time. So click on this configure button here. We have to enable it at the boot time. Okay, remember this word enabling at boot time. We enable devices at boot time. We enable services at boot time. General, put a check mark here, automatically connect to this network when it is available. So that will make sure every time it boots, the operating system boots, this network interface comes up. And we'll do same with the other one also, that one. configure click there's something wrong really it's not supposed to be this much slow general put a check mark there save okay uh, let's put some host name DevOps box. Click on done. Okay, sometimes you need to click on done twice. Right. Now, one last thing we are going to select is the hard disk where it will do the installation. So click here, installation destination, and we have one hard disk attached, 8 GB. Okay. Click on add a disk. Oh, sorry. Done. So if you still get no disk selected, still get no disk selected, go back. Select. Oh, actually, 4 GB is also enough, but you know, we are being generous and giving 8 GB. You're just doing install operating system installation. It's more than enough. You need to go back again. Okay. Select the disk again. Say done. Okay. And done is done. Okay, good. Automatic partition selector. So you selected automatic partition. All right. We don't want to go get into partition for now. Later, we'll learn what are partitions and how to do it. Click on begin installation. You see installation already started. Okay, that simple it is. Uh, now let's set the root password. So let's say I'm going to give admin one, two, three, which is a weak password. Okay, and I click on done and it doesn't allow me. I have to click done twice if I'm setting the weak password. Okay, so I'm going to set up now little tough password, which I'm not going to tell you also. And you thought I'm going to keep telling you passwords, right? Done. Not matching. 
Okay. Yeah. If you want to create one more extra user, this is the password for the root user. Root user is the admin user in Linux. Uh, it's the all powerful have a power to do everything in Linux system. Okay, root user. But apart from that, you should be creating one more user. Let's give it name as DevOps. Let's make this user as administrator. So it can become administrator whenever this user wants. It's like power of attorney we are giving. And let's set up some password. And I'm setting a week one. So I click on done. So to click on done one more time. Okay. You know, we're done. The installation will complete in few minutes. We have to reboot this and we can then start logging in. All right. By the time this happens, we'll set up another virtual machine with Ubuntu operating system. Okay. So let's click on new. So I'm going to select here, use the name DevOps Ubuntu. Okay. So type Linux version Debian 64 bit. Okay. Now, if you have, if you don't have Ubuntu, you can select. Yeah, we have Ubuntu 64 also. Ubuntu 64 bit. Select that. So we are going to install 64 bit operating system. Hey, anybody have 32 bit operating system on their laptop? Anyone? Okay, good. All right. So I'll go with 64 bit only. Okay. So. RAM 1 GB is fine. Go next. Create virtual disk. Create next. All defaults, okay? Okay, it is telling asking 10 GB. Be it 10 GB. Okay. What, Sushma, you have 32 GB operating system? Settings storage oh okay i'll talk to you in a moment empty choose virtual optical disk file ubuntu put a check mark there live also network adapter to enable attach to bridged and I'm going to select my Wi-Fi interface. All right. Now tell me how many network interface you have on your laptop. One or two. Come on. Two. Good. Good, Adi. Yeah. And that's an important point. Okay. You'll understand that. Let's start Ubuntu installation. <clears throat> So there are so many amazing and hidden things in your computer, which you don't know, which will be revealed slowly, slowly to you. Okay. And you will master it to control. The machine will not control you. You will start controlling the machine. Wow. That sounds like I'm talking in a movie. Okay. The Ubuntu installation started. How to check how many interfaces in my laptop? Very good question. I'll show you one is this graphical method, right? So you see here four, and these are virtual from virtual box. These are virtual interface. This is physical ethernet Wi-Fi. Okay. That's one way you can check. I'll show you one command also in windows. Which is IP config. IP config. Okay. And there are a few other commands that we'll learn later through Vagrant. We need to select the right name of our bridge interface. That time I'll show you some virtual box commands also. There are so many ways to find it. Okay. What I typed CMD there. You know what? I think there is something wrong with my laptop. Hmm? 
it's taking too much long time what's taking that much close more details oh oh 100 percent cpu for what virtual box which is 25 screw to go meeting 19 screw to go. does anybody know what is the screw till i hope it's not a virus virtual box manager what do i have two virtual box manager okay fine it's not supposed to take that much cpu Google Chrome. Let me kill it. That makes you happy. I can't kill go to meeting. Come on, give me a break. Does anybody know what's scrutal? 32 bit, you know, we're talking about 32 bit, and here it is. Okay, yeah, about 32 bit, right? Uh, Whoso is having 32 bit operating system? Wake up, <laughs> upgrade it. Okay, it's high time. We have to get into 64 bit world now. Okay, uh, we are going to do a lot of things, different kinds of VM automation and all those things. We will need 64 bit operating system. So, upgrade. If you don't want to upgrade, you have some problem, office laptop, this, that. You, know, you can watch what we are doing and you can try to do same in 32 bit until unless you don't start cloud computing. Okay. But again, then whenever you want to set up VMs, there's so many instances where we will, you know, may not have the access to the internet or you don't want to use cloud computing for some reason, bill is too high. So anytime you can set up virtual machine quickly that you will learn by the next weekend. Okay. But you better upgrade. All right. You know, I'm telling I, I tried, you know, I tried with 32 bit things uh, to help student, but you know, it's resolved. But then again, we get some other problem because of 32 bit. So I told better, you know, upgrade man. Okay. Uh, for this exercise, download a 32 bit ISO and do the installation 32 bit ISO right anyway 64 bit will give you some problems when you're doing installation so you have to go with 32 bit okay so installation is diff different here okay scrutal.exe using too much cpu memory it's a probably your file best it's probably your file has been infected with the virus this google says <gasps> Oh man. <laughs> okay. And that's why I use all the time Ubuntu desktop operating system, you know, or any other Linux desktop operating system. But for recording, I have to do this. Okay. I'm selecting the language. Done. Applying config. Okay, install Ubuntu. Yes, hit enter. Wow. Okay, these are two interface. Okay, that's one. Edit IPv4. Automatic DSCP. Fine. Save that. Yes, that's fine. But how do I enable it? Okay, I'm gonna send you a document, okay, for Ubuntu 16 installations. So we can go with that one also. How do I make sure it's enabled at the boot time? Proxy address, no proxy address done. 
mirror address. So this is going to be the URL from where it's going to download the software from. Okay. Uh, partitioning use entire disk. So there is nothing on the, this virtual disk. We just have attached it. So we, I, we can tell that use the entire disk and do the partitioning. And there's manual that we'll see later. Choose hard disk. Yes, that's the hard disk. Okay, done. But this is the partitioning scheme it is telling. We're good. We don't care really now. I sure you want to continue. Continue. Okay, your name, server's name. Pick a username. How about my name? Pick a password. Okay, these are popular snaps in server environment, select or deselect with space. It is telling these are some popular software. Which one do you want? Oh, snap, sorry. Docker, LXT. Let come on. It's not letting me select also. What do you want it to make? I don't want it to make anything. CLI, Heroku. Amazon SSM agent, Kubernetes, Mosquito, Nicholas Mosquito MQ. Oh, that's a broker. So this is like you know kind of uh, a server that you are setting up, right? Which kind of server do you want? You can select that. So it will install that kind of software. I'm looking for something neutral. Yeah. User command interface. There's no neutral option here, something keep alive. Juju Python. Hmm. Something fancy from Ubuntu 18 now. Huh? Who cares? Now we directly go with OS installation. We uh, know the package installation, man. Whatever package we need, we install. Don't try to make it's trying to give more comfort to us. Okay. I don't want anything, but I have to select something. Ah, let's select. Oh, I can just see done also. Okay, fine, finally. Okay, you know, that's uh, something new, okay, from Ubuntu 18. I always try to go with the latest one. You're going to get the document of how to set up Ubuntu 16. So that is also one more exercise for you, one more VM setup, Ubuntu 16. You've seen how simple is Ubuntu 18 setup. Just we select, select, next, next, next. Just like software installation we see in Windows, right? So the installation is starting. It will probably ask us for the passwords and stuff. This is not yet done. Oh. Okay. And all of you need to set up these VMs because we will be starting to learn Linux. And uh, for that purpose, You'll need a Linux VMs. So we will be using one Ubuntu, one CentOS, because I'll be training you on Red Hat based and Debian based operating system. Okay, simultaneously. All right, because being a DevOps, you can't just say, oh, I will just use this operating system. That's not going to work out. Okay, some people will use Ubuntu, some will use CentOS, some will use heterogeneous cloud, you know, multiple different different operating system, even Windows, even Red Hat Enterprise Linux. OK, so you should be comfortable with Red Hat family and Debian family. All right. And also, of course, Windows, which everyone is comfortable. OK, so we'll be using mix of these operating system throughout this course. And we already start doing it, started doing it. OK. Cancel. Open SSH server. Scootil, right? Scootil. You know, I had an antivirus in this. I think it was expired or something. Avast. I don't actually use much Windows operating system on my desktop. I have Linux operating system. I do everything from there. But you know, when I'm showing you this class, I have to be here in Windows system.
Which fine, I'll do that later anyways. Yeah, the installation is going on and it's gonna take some time, people. So, you know, if you have any question, you can ask me by that time. Come on, why are you people so silent? You choose only Oracle virtual. So my name is Imran, by the way, Shri, but you don't need to call me sir. Uh, okay, fine, no problem. So I answered that question three previously also. We're choosing Oracle VM virtual box only because we will be learning Vagrant also. Vagrant is an automation tool for virtual machine and it works very well with Oracle virtual box. So that's why Oracle virtual box. Okay. Uh, not a very specific reason. It's also very lightweight, no licensing. All right. So the few reasons, the major reason is it works very well with Vagrant. The integration is good with this one. So that's why that one. Okay. Are we covering Kubernetes? Yes, of course. And how do you know it's K8S, it's called as K8S. You've used it. Can you please tell again what all we did today? Huh. We installed Oracle VM virtual box. Where is that PP? Okay. So we installed Oracle VM virtual box software. We created a VM. We created two VMs actually. One for CentOS installation, one for Ubuntu. We downloaded the ISO attached the ISO to the VM, started the installation and the installation is going on. Yeah, there are uh, plenty out there, Sri. There's VMware Workstation, VMware Player, Hyper-V, and then there are different kinds uh, of hypervisors also. Uh, in virtualization, I'm going to explain you this concept. Okay, different types. So we are creating an environment. Uh, we are just creating virtual machine. That's all. Okay, nothing much. It's virtual machine with Linux operating system. That's all. Environment, complete environment, complete infrastructure setup. We will do that. Landscape. I don't know what you mean by that. Can we connect from Ubuntu to centers from our virtual box. Of course we can. I'll show you those things. And for that reason only we have selected their bridge interface. Ah, yeah, you can see like that. Huh? Um, actually, this today's class is uh, to make you understand um, how to set up a virtual machine. So tomorrow I'm going to show you tomorrow is in the next week. I'm going to show you how to automate this process. You'll understand what I'm telling you. Now I'm going to teach you only Ansible, not Chef. Ansible and Puppet. Okay, and Puppet is going to be video lectures. All right, chef also you'll get some video lectures, but you know, it is just too much to take that many configuration management tool. Okay, you know, uh, it's already so much on our plate. And chef anyways, it's not that much bigger market. So I've excluded chef. I used to have chef previously, but now, you know, two months is also not enough. I can't just keep including softwares. Now this Saturday will not have class. You set up the virtual machine and uh, you give the confirmation of the class to the admins. Admin